This is Alex Perez with Tequila Aficionado Podcast, and we are back at El Cholo Restaurant in beautiful Pasadena. We want to thank uh, El Cholo Restaurants and Blair Salisbury for uh, having us again. And I have the distinct pleasure of having uh, some representatives from uh, Tequila Cuatro Copas, also from uh, La Quemada Distillery, and I uh, have the pleasure of having them with us. Welcome, guys. Uh, thank you very, thank you very much. Pleasure have, to be here. Hey, very good. I have uh, Chris Melendez, who is the CEO and President of uh, Cuatro Copas, and I also have Enrico Caruso, who is the National Sales Manager, and I assume you're all over the place. That's right. Promoting it takes me everywhere. Yeah, it's promoting. So, uh, it's a fun job, so uh, no problems going anywhere in Texas. Well, I envy you. Very good. Well, we're here to learn a little bit more about uh, Tequila Cuatro Copas. We'd like to know the history of uh, the distillery, uh, maybe even what got you guys into tequila, because obviously it's, it's uh, sometimes an acquired taste. Um, and anything you can tell us about uh, La Quemada Distillery. And also, we're going to go through uh, the tequilas, uh, taste them, and uh, uh, so you can also buy a bottle, hopefully, acquire a bottle, and also taste and see if you can compare uh, what we're tasting and we're smelling, too. So, uh, Chris, if you can tell us, uh, give us a little bit of history on uh, 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 the distillery, um, La, uh, La Quemada Distillery, maybe why it's called La Quemada. Give us some, some, some info. Uh, the distillery is located in El Arenal, <coughs> which is in the lowlands. And uh, La Quemada means uh, the burnt one. And uh, we named it that. It's been in business for 87 years. And it was named that from uh, legend that lightning came down and you know, hit, the, hit the, the plant and roasted it. And that's where it comes from. And boom, agave. Boom, agave. Hey, and tequila. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Well, I guess uh, uh, from the legend, I guess, right? It's the, Correct. the God's way of, of, uh, of saying here is the nectar of the gods. Giving something to the people. Yeah, very good. And that's hence the name of La Quemada. La Quemada, yes. Very good. And when did La Quemada come, come, uh, come about? Uh, it's been, uh, the doors have been open for 87 years. And uh, they've been uh, making tequila for uh, uh, themselves and, and other companies and um, uh, until... Uh, about 14 years ago, they just decided that they wanted to go ahead and, and make their own brand since they kept refining it and making it so so pure and, and so wonderful that they just wanted to go ahead and have their own. <coughs> they uh, uh, have a wonderful team behind them. Uh, our uh, agronomist uh, ran Sousa's plants for many, many years, uh, Octavio, and uh, he came aboard with us and just is, is doing a wonderful job with the agave. He tests it all the time. Every row of agave is tested before we harvest it for the peak sugar content. And uh, he's just, he's, he's, he's brilliant. Our uh, master distiller, his name is Sebastian, and uh, he comes from uh, Casa Herradura, and uh, he was the creator of uh, Selección Suprema, which, as we all know, is pretty much the benchmarks for all Anejos around. And uh, he came with us, uh, joined us a while ago, and uh, this actually is the fruit of all his efforts. Well, they all are, but uh, our Añejo is, is just top-notch. So yeah. superb Añejo, and we'll get a chance yeah. to try that. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So, and we also have our own laboratory where we continuously test and uh, make sure that you know we've got the highest quality tequila and the highest quality plants out there. And it just it really comes through with our tequilas. It's a lot more expensive, uh, uh, you know, maintaining the the, the plant, the lab, and uh, everybody involved, everyone that's on staff. It's it, it's quite expensive, but once you taste the tequila, you'll really appreciate everyone's efforts. Yeah, it's worth the effort because I've tasted it and and it's a great great tequila. Thank you. Uh, now, um, we, you, you mentioned a little bit about the Añejo. How many years is the Añejo aged for? The Añejo is a blend of two- and five-year-aged uh, barrels. Uh, we've tried all kinds of different combinations, and the combination that's in there, the blend between the two-year and the five-year, is spot on. Very good. Now, you've got another bottle next to this Añejo, which also looks like a, a, an Añejo. Yes. What would that be? It, it is an Añejo, actually. It is a eight-year Añejo. And uh, it's the uh, special reserve. This is a limited edition $1,000 bottle. Uh, we only make 100 of them a year. And the buyer uh, gets a hand signed uh, letter and also their name engraved at the bottom on this uh, pewter plaque. Um, the, uh, there's some of the more prominent hotels that have picked up our tequila, like, such as the Four Seasons and, and uh, Marriott Star Pass and a couple in Hawaii that we go ahead and give bottles to in appreciation of their picking up our, our line. 
Fantastic. Well, it's a beautiful bottle. Well, it's actually a replica, isn't it, of a famous bottle? Yeah, uh, the, one of the largest bottles, I believe, in the world. It's a mini replica of it. We call this mini, but uh, it's uh, certainly smaller than the big one. And uh, it's, uh, it, it's a wonderful presentation, and the uh, contents are even better. Very good. Now, what would uh, you? Well, we're going kind of backwards here. We'll jump over to the Reposado. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Why don't you go ahead and start? Uh, Reposado actually is our gold medal winner, San Francisco Spirits competition, two years running. So in a way you can say that's our gold medal baby, but it's aged eight to nine months in oak barrels. And it's got a smooth finish like everything else in our line, a little more caramel in it. And it's very well subscribed, well received. Very good. Now, you mentioned uh, the caramel nuances. Now, I've read that you don't put anything in the in your tequila, any type of uh, additives or uh, essences of anything. Is that true? Nothing's ever None added. whatsoever. I know that's popular nowadays to kick it up with a little vanilla, caramel, butterscotch, but we would just rely on the quality of our agave to do the speaking for us. Nothing's ever added. It's done in the old-fashioned way. Very good. I'm looking forward to taste that. Now, how about your Blanco? Uh, the Blanco is just... A lively, fiery experience with you and the agave. It's very smooth um, as well as everything else is on our line. And it comes out with more of a lemon, white pepper finish. But everyone's pretty amazed when they taste the Blanco. They're expecting that harshness that's associated with Blancos, and they don't get it with ours. And that's, again, a testament to the agave that we grow. We fully let the sugars develop eight to ten years in our agave, and that comes through in the product. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, um, aside from the fine tequilas that you have, I got a little bottle here too, and it uh, says 100% blue agave. What is this, uh, Enrico and Chris? Well, that's our special um, agave special concoction. <laughs> <laughs> That's right from the agave plant, and it's going to be the wave of the future. There's no doubt about it. Um, we're, we're doing tastings around the country, and we're bringing this along to Hawaii, Arizona, and chefs, chefs, bars, you can mix with it. You mix margaritas with it. Normally, you'll mix margaritas with a simple sugar syrup, but why not use something from the agave itself since you're using tequila? It's actually versatile. You can use it to do any mixing. The, the kicker here is that it's so sweet. It's sweeter than honey, yet the glycemic index is 11. So diabetics can take this. So this is a healthy sugar sweetener that you can use to sweeten teas, mixed drinks, food. And we're, we're going to launch this within the month after we get our organic and kosher certificate. Oh, and the cool thing about it is that it doesn't have the overpowering tones that honey does. You know, when, when you mix, even if you mix tea with honey or, or you cook with it, it it's got that, that overpowering oh, flavor. Nice. This is just, it's just pure sweetness, and it's it's 100% blue agave, and it's wonderful. So we'll be bringing that in mass marketing very soon. Very good, and I like that. It's pure sweetness. Now, uh, very important, uh, diabetic safe. Yes. Um, this is, uh, is in the news constantly now, isn't it? about the, uh, the agave uh, nectar being used uh, to replace sugar. Uh, now, are, do you have any cooks that are currently using, or any chefs, I should say? Yes, we this? do. Uh, actually, it's a um, very good question. We've got uh, one of our partners in Hawaii, uh, Chef Sam Choi, is cooking with it a lot. Um, the uh, chefs at Google, um, which that company is the, is the only company in the United States that has four-star chefs. Uh, they love it. They cook with it. And a lot of other chefs at uh, you know major hotels and some really you know very... Um, higher tier restaurants are, are picking it up just because it, it mixes so well and it doesn't have overpowering taste. It's diabetic friendly and it's organic and they just they love it. And uh, we're going to be the only uh, distillery that's actually going to bring it to market first here. Wow, well, that's very exciting. Very exciting. And uh, hopefully we can have a little spoonful of this. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, listen, what, yeah, well, why don't we go ahead and start with uh, tasting some of the tequilas. Uh, if you guys want to do the, the honors, you want to start with the Blanco first? The Blanco. So this is uh, distilled and bottled immediately. Very good. And we're using, uh, well, you, I'm using Riedel glasses, which uh, is, this is the tequila glass. And we're also using little uh, uh, shot glasses or little, uh, will, caballitos little caballitos that we provide our uh, preferred restaurants and bars with. Um, we, we like the uh, cylindrical <laughs> shape of this, the taller one, um, because it, it's much better to have a tall 
uh, glass. It's a common misnomer that a lot of uh, tequila drinkers and, and bars, in fact, will serve tequila, uh, fine tequilas, in uh, brandy snifters or cognac snifters. And if here's a little experiment you do. Pour, pour one tequila in a Rydell glass or a champagne flute, if, if, if that's what you have, and one in a cognac glass, and you're going to taste two different products. You'll smell two different products, but the, the taste will be the same. It's, it's really, really interesting, but uh, it, 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 it's a fun little exercise to run through. All right, well, Chris, you want to take us through? Yes, what you, okay. What do we see? Or I see some, uh, some silver hues in there. Very so uh, bright. Very delicate silver hues. Um, it's uh, got some very nice legs on it. The uh, uh, initial taste that I have is an immediate white crushed uh, pepper. Pepper. And as I let it um, drift off the side of my tongue and, and, and I swallow it, I get a, a, a very distinct agave and lemon lime finish to it. So, so. You get Love the pepper that. in there. Yeah. Yeah. Right away you get that pepper, which I, I can't find in, in very many other tequilas. Yeah, that's got the pleasant warmth that I got run in the tongue. Yeah. Actually, not in the throat, which is different for me. The neat thing about our complete line, even with our uh, eight-year in Yeho, is that all of them have a very distinct agave finish, which I love. I love the, 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 the taste and the smell of agave. Even when I spill it in my hands, I'll, I'll just smell it and I can just really smell the agave. And that's very, that, makes, that makes our tequila very special to me. Another strong point in <coughs> Blanco, since it does have that lemon-lime finish, it just goes great with margaritas mixing with limes as well. So you get a lot of compliments at bars and people. And, and lemon margaritas. drops too. We've got a few bartenders that are making lemon drops with our Blanco and it's just outstanding. Very good. Well, I definitely get the the, uh, the lemon uh, tones in there. It's very good. Mm. All righty. Well, let's go to the next one. This that would is be your reposado. Reposado. Eight to nine months. Oh, you said this is uh, in oak. For yes, about we nine use, months. We actually use Jack Daniel barrels. How do you? Uh, we take all the char out, take all the char out, all of it out, and uh, we just let it rest. Thank you, Enrico, for this most generous, very, very generous. <laughs> <shot. laughs> no, I know sir. you gave me your best shot. You give me Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, not a party shot. <laughs> now this, uh, it's nice golden hues to this. It's bright, bright gold. Yes. Enrico, you want to take us through the reposado? Yeah, the reposado definitely you smell the warmth, um, the aging in the bourbon barrel, Jack Daniels. So you're definitely gonna Ooh, pick up warm. the bourbon as well. Uh, and yeah, the I caramel. can definitely pick that up. Yeah, and you'll get the caramel finish. Was that a ding ding? Did you just got there? Yeah, <laughs> some that's sound effects. Somebody, <laughs> somebody, somebody <laughs> bothering me. Somebody's looking for you. Very the good. Jar our reposado a little longer than most, so we commonly get, oh, this is this is a really good añejo. No, this is our reposado, because it does have a lot more character than your regular repo. Um, but you can tell the smoothness comes out and the caramel, and it's all natural. Nothing's ever added to this. We're just relying on the quality of the distillery and the people working there and the agave. It's very good. I can, I can taste the caramel. I can taste the agave coming through. It's not masked by, by the wood. It's not overpowering, and, and this is something that we were talking about the other week, is that a lot of uh, a lot of uh, reposados and, and yejos are, have have heavy vanilla and, and caramel and and um, even chocolate overtones. And if I want, you know, if I want that, I'm going to order dessert. You know, I'm not going to order my tequila that tastes like that. So um, it's just it's wonderful just to taste the agave. I really love that. Very good. Thank you. Okay, so that was Reposado. All right. And we're moving along to the Añejo. Our Añejo, a two and a five year blend. Also, you're using uh, the white oak uh, barrels? That's yes. Correct. Yes. This, uh, this particular tequila I like to characterize as fun. Uh, I 
it's just it, it, it really when I when I drink it I just get this wonderful fun sensation on my tongue I don't want to sound weird but it's really an experience that uh, a lot of my friends enjoy you can see the uh, amber tones in there it's a beautiful color it's got a nice nose a little caramel yeah. nose yeah, and this is our, our uh, one of our master distillers, Baby. Like I mentioned earlier, he, he created Selection Suprema, and this is his uh, his next next Very good. Of Very it rolls right on your tongue. Rolls right on the tongue. Nice caramel finish. Mm. Like little macadamia roasty, nut. Roasty. Yeah, it's a little yeah. nutty. It's a little roasty, little nutty. nutty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll just have and to I can actually taste. get a little nuttiness in the nose too. Mm-hmm. Little nuttiness in the nose. We're all getting a little nutty here. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed we are. Yeah, I think the macadamia, you hit it right in the nose. Yeah. It's very good. Taste I, I really yeah. like this. Yeah. It's very good. Now, well, let's let's have you try our uh, our eight-year in Yeho. Oh, we're opening that. If you find yourself, uh, Enrico... Um, Selling um, more añejos or blancos or reposados in your line, what, what do you find yourself selling more of? Uh, you know, it all depends on the establishment. Um, I guess how they're mixing as well. If it's more of a vodka place, um, they'll tend to lean towards the blancos. It's that kind of crowd they're mixing. If it's more of a formal place, they sit down cigar bars as well. They're definitely going for the añejo for the character and the richness of that. It's pretty equally distributed. Very good. Now, have you guys have uh, done any uh, blind tastings? Uh, gone head to head with some of the other tequilas? Yes, we have. <laughs> we have done that, uh, we, we've we've done that, and actually, uh, the uh, Four Seasons uh, Hotel in Scottsdale did a blind taste test with um, uh, our Blanco and a, another two hundred plus Blanco, two hundred dollar plus Blanco um, that we're all very familiar with. And uh, 10 out of 10 people picked ours, 100%. So we've got ours retailing for around $64 versus 239 or 249 wherever you may buy it. And ours just totally blew them away. So we're very proud of that. Very good. Now, um, where can we find the Atlanta tequilas? Uh, for example, we're here we're in Southern California. It's a, it's a big market. Where would someone in Southern California or maybe another part of the country find uh, uh, Cuatro Copas? Well, we, uh, currently we're in Arizona, California, and Hawaii. Uh, here in California, you can find it at uh, Beverages and More, BetMo. Uh, they carry our complete line um, and other fine uh, wine and spirit stores. Um, <clears throat> in uh, Arizona, you can find it at uh, AJ's Fine Foods, Sportsman's, and AZ Wine. And in, uh, in Hawaii, at uh, uh, Tamuras and Fujioka's, and some of the finer restaurants and bars. Very good. And actually, we have it here at El Cholo. Yes, right? that's right. Yeah, so you can come down to El Cholo and and have some cuatro copas with your meal. My favorite Mexican restaurant. Very good. I've been coming to El Cholo's as he has uh, since we were at USC and downtown, and just uh, I'm glad they're here in Pasadena because my mom's right here. Every time I come here. See my mom, we go here. <laughs> All right. Very good. Yeah, El Cholo, we love El Cholo. It's a great restaurant. We want to thank uh, Blair for having us, too. Absolutely. Thank you, Blair. Now, you want to take us through the, it's an eight-year? This is Añejo. an eight-year This is a special, Añejo. special bottle. Yes. Or bottling, I should say. Special bottling. Uh, we only make 100 of them a year. And uh, it, uh, it's, it's everything that this is, but a lot deeper. And uh, I, I think that this is fun. This is just absolutely Mellow and fantastic. So why don't we try it? Well, let's try Mellow and Fantastic. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Wow. It's very rich. It is very rich. Very, very rich. Mm. Very rich. It's, it's um, wow. It really fills, fills the mouth. Mm. Wow. It's almost like you want to chew it. There's so much going on in there. <laughs> I have this for, at home and uh, for on very special occasions like uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas when my family's around, we'll give them a little taste. Yeah, it's a very, very good um, uh, batch, if I want to call it that. Yeah. Uh, it is, it's very rich and very deep. Mm. Very full in the mouth. 
just a, a just a light uh, uh, light pleasant uh, warmth in the tongue and you still taste the agave in this yes you which, do. Is neat, which is rare for a lot of the uh, even some of the uh, some of the five-year uh, aged tequilas that you can find on the market you, you really can't taste the agave I think uh, Sebastian has done a wonderful job with this the whole team down there very good now talking about your whole team down there and this is fantastic by the way beautiful tequila um, is um, uh, La Quemada distillery open for the public so if an individual is, is coming down to the tequila area um, are they free to come in and, and make it maybe an appointment and take a tour? Yes, absolutely it is. Um, we would prefer if you uh, send an email or call, uh, you can uh, uh, email uh, contacto at laquemada.com. And uh, it, it very very well may be that when you come down and visit, we're going to be putting on a rodeo. We have a, a charreria team that is consistently in the top ten in the country. And it's, it's so fun to go down there. I was fortunate enough to go down there once, and they were having a rodeo. And our own team comes in, and they're, they got the bulls and the horses, and they're doing the, the tricks and had a wonderful feast prepared for us by several people. And it's just it's a wonderful experience. The bull ring is right there in the distillery. And it's just it's a lot of fun. The it's, rope yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> the, the people are, 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 are so warm and kind. And it's when you go there, it's it's not a uh, like, like like a public. It's a private company. It's not a uh, like a public corporation where there's you know a lot of pressure for people to do this and do that. It's very family oriented. And um, w w when you go there, very often you'll see people with their families walking around, and it's just it's a it's a really comfortable atmosphere. Very good. So they should uh, email. Uh, Padre Copas, and we'll, we'll have that information on uh, on the website. Uh, so if you'd like to go down and tour, which we encourage, I think I think even more so the the Mexican government is actually encouraging uh, um, travel down there and uh, somewhat of kind of like what uh, the wine industry wine industry has done, yeah. where uh, they encourage people to come by and visit the wineries. Well, uh, Mexico wants you to come down and visit the distilleries, and it, and it's a completely different experience. Um, because you you learn to appreciate it more, you learn to appreciate where this this uh, this fabulous drink is coming from. You appreciate the hard work the Himalotas are doing out in the field. Oh, very hard the roasting, work. Yeah, yes. roasting, and how this plant who, which has been sitting for eight ten years in the ground, all of a sudden transforms into this this incredible uh, incredible drink and we'll put you on a couple horses and we'll we'll ride you through the fields and, and take you around and you know show the different ages of the agave and and then you know go into the uh, um, the uh, show the ovens and then the whole process fermentation and the huge warehouses of, of, of barrels and and uh, it's just a it's a complete education and it's really rewarding very good now I want to ask you a, a, a question uh, in regards to the area where uh, La Quemada is, uh, which is the lowlands, uh, there's always this this thing about we're in the lowlands. You guys are in the highlands, mm -hmm. and uh, you know our agave grows this way, your agave grows that way. Uh, in other words, the terroir, if you will, of, of, of the ground and, and uh, uh, the distinct um, characteristics, obviously that the ground imparts in the agaves. Do you have anything to say about that? Um, well, yeah. I mean, there's 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 been a lot of uh, conversation about you know highlands are better than lowlands or lowlands has, is earthier than the highlands, and it, it all comes down to you know how you really care for the agave. It doesn't matter you know where it's grown you know in the highland comparing highlands or lowlands as long as the agave is really taken care of and nurtured. And, and that's the main thing that we focus on. So lowlands, highlands, yeah, there, there are some differences in taste, sure. You know, the lowlands is a little earthier, a little spicier. You know, the highlands has, a, you know, a little different taste, you know, that uh, most connoisseurs can, can, can uh, ascertain. But I, I, I think it all comes down to the care of the plant, really. Yeah, which, which from my understanding, they're like little children yes. for the farmers, exactly. right? Yes. Yeah, they got to take care of them for the, all those years. Yes, well, and that point as well, just... We definitely use a time-honored way to make tequila, but there are some processes in our tequila that make us different. And we are an organic tequila, a kosher tequila, and the nuances that go into differentiating ourselves from everyone else. One of the examples is the soil that we use. We use a soil that comes from the agave mulch left over during the fermentation process. We put it in a compost, put it back into the soil, 
And the benefit of that is that our plants become pest resistant. So it, through the course of eight right. to ten years, we never use any pesticides. And that's pretty, to be a grape or a grain and a, and a vodka, you only have to go through one season of being organic. Well, we have to do that for eight to ten years. That's why you don't see organic tequilas, because it's such a big investment. But I think it comes out in the, in the quality and purity. And on top of that as well, everyone, every other distiller, um, every other spirit out there uses baker's yeast, brewer's yeast brewer's to yeast. get the process going. We don't. We have a patented yeast developed from the agave plant itself. So when we say we're 100% uh, agave, blue agave, we, we truly are. are. Because even our yeast is from the agave. We don't use bakers or brewers. So these are special procedures and nuances that only we have at La Quimada. Right, and they are patented with the Mexican government. Um, our, our process of uh, putting the, the waste agave back into the land and treating it um, is, is patented, but we do share it with other distilleries in hopes that they do the same so that we don't have another virus crisis. Very good, very good. Well, that's very impressive. Uh, and I'm sure it, it takes a lot of time, a lot of investment to do uh, all those little things that uh, basically you're, you're not taking shortcuts. No, is what you're never. Doing. No, yeah. never. Yeah. And, and you can truly taste it in the quality of, of the product. Thank you. Yeah, they're they're mar marvelous products. Now, um, let's try the agave nectar. Now, we got to find a spoon. Find, find a spoon you can for put us? some on your finger if you want. Put some on my finger? Okay. Sure. Just don't bite the finger because it's really sweet. <laughs> you why, don't you, why don't you pour it on my finger? <laughs> Usually you would be doing this on a spoon, but uh, we're going a little organic here. Nothing okay, but okay. the best here. <laughs> <laughs> I did wash my hands before I did it. Wow. Isn't that something? So mix drinks with it, cook, and tea, and so versatile. It's very good. It's so light. And it's it's light. very light. It's not it's overpowering. So and we mix them with our lemon drops and our margarita. So when you order a margarita, it's a healthy margarita because you're getting organic tequila, you're getting organic sweetener, and you're not going to have that, that, that bad overtone. It's, it's truly, you want a healthy margarita, original, 100% agave margarita, Four Copas has it. Very good. And plus the other ones that you'll see in the market, they're always amber, darker in color. So if you're mixing drinks, it's going to change the color. Oh, that's this a one, good point. I mean, the consistency, the color, the clarity just disappears. So you get the sweetness in a healthy way without altering your drink at all. Very so. good. Are you, do you have any famous uh, mixologists that are using uh, the product? You might want to get it out to them, some famous bartenders. Well, we've got a, a staff bartender uh, who uh, used to be a staff bartender for uh, a very prominent individual in North County, San Diego. And um, he's uh, he's joined us part time, and his, his his drinks are just absolutely wonderful. So what we're doing is we're going around to different restaurants, and we're throwing them behind the bar, and he's educating the staff on how to make uh, Fort Copas cocktails, and uh, he, he uses this, and 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 the bartending staff, every one of them that we've been to, are just amazed. Amazing. And sure enough, the chef will come out. And they're like, what is this I'm hearing about? And then he'll try it and he'll say, can I mix something, you know, in back and in a dish? And it's just, it, it's viral. It's really, you know, it's starting to spread around and uh, it's great for us. We yeah, love it. They're having fun with it. Very good. Well, I'm very impressed with that and uh, I'm sure it's going to be very well received. And uh, I congratulate you guys on, uh, on that thank product. You, too. Uh, thank you very yeah. much, Alex. And I congratulate you guys on the uh, consecutive gold, silver, and bronze medals that you guys have had in 2005 and 2006 in the San Francisco World Spirits uh, competition. And uh, you definitely are, are getting uh, high marks from Tequila Aficionado. Uh, it's, it's a fine product, and, uh, and you need to go out and get yourself some. Very good. Wonderful. Yeah, no, thank you for being with us, Chris. Oh, it's our Enrico, pleasure. thank you for being with us. For us. And uh, you can uh, find us on tequilaaficionado.com, and you can also find some information on, uh, on Cuatro Copas Tequila and La Quemada Tequila uh, Distillery on tequilaaficionado.com. And hopefully uh, also contact them so you can go out and tour the facility. You're going to be very well received with, yes, uh, with open arms. All right, Chris, you want to give a formal invitation? Yes, I'd like to invite anybody to come down. Uh, just get in contact with us, and uh, uh, we, you have uh, open arms uh, from us to you to come down. Very good. Thanks. And you know the, web, the, uh, the uh, email address? You said it was info? Um, you can either do um, info at fourcopas.com or contacto at laquemada.com. Very good. Contacto at laquemada.com. We'll, we'll have that information on, uh, on the website, too. Very good. We want to thank you guys again for being with us. We Thanks want to thank uh, Blair. It, no, thank you. We had a good time. 
We want to thank uh, Blair Salisbury also for uh, hosting us and allowing us yeah. to use uh, uh, El, El Cholo. Cholo. Yeah, El yes. Cholo and Pasadena. <laughs> it's a famous. Great here already. Can't yeah, wait to dig I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great restaurant. We're in the Pasadena location, and uh, obviously he comes from a long line of uh, restaurateurs, and uh, we appreciate that too. Very good. Thank you, guys. Thank you.